chairman and the executive committee of APRACA, uh, Mr. Sanarat Bandara, and uh, the senior officials of the Bank of Ceylon who have been very instrumental in putting this event together, our friends from across the region, uh, my fellow Sri Lankans. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you. Uh, listening to the summary, it's clear that you've had a, some very fruitful and productive deliberations during the course of the day. Uh, coming in at the uh, end of the day's proceedings, uh, let me see whether I can share some thoughts with you. I do so with great humility because I suspect everybody in this room knows more about MSME financing than I do. Uh, but anyway, let me uh, offer some thoughts uh, for you. I, it goes without saying that the MSME sector is the backbone of most of our economy. Uh, development of MSMEs is identified as important for increasing financial inclusion, development of rural economies, the creation of employment, and overall economic development. The MSMEs are also expected to play a vital role in assisting developing countries to achieve their SDGs by 2030. Now, from my understanding of the sector, there are four levels at which constructive engagement is necessary. And it's also important that the support for the sector is given in a holistic and well-coordinated manner. From my understanding in many of our countries, the institutional infrastructure supporting MSMEs tends to be very fragmented. And we have many people doing different things, sometimes pulling in different directions. So a coordinated approach clearly is of significant importance. And one also needs a holistic approach. I would put to you that there are four levels at which intervention is required to support MSMEs. One is training, including entrepreneurial training, training in financial management, uh, project preparation, etc. One also needs to ensure that the MSMEs obtain the inputs that they require, particularly the appropriate technology. Then, of course, there's financing, which is the theme of this conference, and I'll come back to financing and focus most of my remarks on financing. But to me, the most intractable problem for MSMEs is marketing. If the marketing channel is cleared, you bankers will give the money. If you're confident that an MSME can sell its product, clearly that solves a lot of your problem. And I suspect experience in other countries is similar to ours. We have focused on the production function, training, finance, inputs, etc., but have not paid sufficient attention to the marketing aspect to see whether MSMEs can be linked to local supply chains, to supply chains in the region of the country, to national supply chains, to cross-border supply chains. That focus has not always been there in programs designed to support MSMEs. In fact, when I first joined the Central Bank in 1974, we had a major SME, MSME development program implemented by the government. This was way back in 1974. Hundreds of SMEs were created all around the country. I'm told there's only one left. It's in Emilipitia, it's a, a town in Sri Lanka. And the main problem was they couldn't market their products. They didn't, they were not able to produce output which was marketable. So this is a key thing, a holistic approach, a concerted, coordinated, support structure uh, is, is, I think, crucial. 
uh, for um, promoting sustainable development of the MSME tech sector. So let me now come back to the theme of today's conference, uh, which is, of course, financing MSMEs. As the sector has no collateral to offer, bankers have often identi identified the MSME sector to be high risk with complex and diverse business structures. As a result, credit to the sector tends to be highly constrained. However, there are pockets of excellence. I suspect in all our countries we see pockets of excellence. And in Sri Lanka, the whole ecosystem around ICT startup is particularly impressive. In fact, there's a World Bank project looking at innovation and entrepreneurship in the country. And I met the team a few days ago, and they were saying that this whole ecosystem within the ICT sector in terms of the startup ecosystem was extremely impressive. So we need to understand what has really what have been the determinants of the success of these ecosystems that we find which have been successful and to see whether we can replicate them. On the downside, we must also acknowledge that in our countries, and including my own, the microfinance sector has experienced maladies over over-indebtedness and the lack of customer protection. So these are areas where we need to see how we can up our game. In order to serve the MSMEs better, it is necessary to attach the highest priority to a fundamental change in the management attitude and the internal processes of financial institutions. Financial institutions need to provide specialized MSME windows in their branches with specially trained staff and adopt appropriate MSME credit rating system. In dealing with delinquent MSME customers, financial institutions should have specialist teams to monitor and manage distressed MSMEs, adopting a process of engagement rather than punitive action. It is of paramount importance that financial institutions be more flexible and innovative in dealing with MSMEs. As you all know, MSMEs, unlike well-established larger business enterprises, need nurturing from the initiation stage to develop into sustainable and robust businesses. Financial institutions must have a proactive and value-added engagement and build relationships with their borrowers, helping to improve their bankability. It is imperative that financial institutions do not just provide financial support, but also help inculcate the necessary entrepreneurial and management skill in MSMEs. Financial institutions must also assist their clients to improve their risk and credit ratings, their business planning, as well as their financial management and reporting, thereby enhancing their ability to mobilize credit. Priority should be attached to the financial services sector revamping their internal processes to cater to the banking needs of MSMEs. So the message basically is the financial sector also needs to, be, to innovate and be creative in the way it engages with MSMEs and not expect MSMEs with their limited capacity to fit in to the normal orthodox banking processes and procedures. Most importantly, financial institutions should change their internal credit evaluation and risk assessment processes to increase the quality of management decision making. In assessing the MSME customers, financial institutions must rely less on the current financial position of their client, but give more weight to factors such as the product offering, the market conditions, future cash flow, and exposure to foreign exchange risk. In this regard, the use of information technology to obtain more information from MSMEs, to predict future cash flows, to increase the process efficiency of dispersing financing, to introduce more sophisticated loan management, 
techniques such as portfolio te stress testing is also suggested. Turning to the regulators, including us in the central banks, we have a role in assisting the growth of the MSME sector as well. The main role of regulators to improve is, is to improve the in lending infrastructure and enact enabling regulation which is favorable for MSME development. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce of Sri Lanka has formulated the national policy framework for SME development with a vision of creating a significant number of globally competitive, dynamic, innovative, and technologically driven, eco-friendly, and sustainable MSMEs. The framework supports policy intervention to support SME growth by creating a supporting enabling environment and interventions to support technology transfer and entrepreneurial culture, skills development, access to finance, market facilitation, and research and development. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka is partnering with the government of Sri Lanka in the implementation of the framework by aligning the relevant policy changes with the framework. If I can turn to some of the bread and butter business of Central Bank, our primary objective is price and economic stability. And clearly for MSMEs to prosper, it is important that ha one has a low inflation and stable set of economic policies. Because these are vulnerable enterprises which can be buffeted very negatively by rapid price increases or changes in policy. So predictable and consistent policies and low and stable inflation, which is very much part of the remit of central banks, is important for creating an enabling environment that is conducive for MSME development. And particularly as MSMEs are often owned and uh, where the workforce comes from among the poorer and more vulnerable sectors of the economy, one must remember that inflation is a highly regressive implicit tax in the sense that when there is high inflation, the wealthy who own assets have a natural hedge because their assets also increase in value. But the poor and vulnerable and many people who operate in the world of MSMEs do not own assets which can be used as a hedge against inflation. So that makes it even more important that central banks are successful in maintaining stable uh, and low inflation. Central banks are also responsible for the exchange rate. A very topical issue these days in emerging markets. Many of our countries are finding our exchange rates under some pressure, particularly those exposed to international capital markets. But what one must remember is that if one is to upgrade MSMEs, to a point where they're able to access export markets, either as part of global or regional production sharing networks, or directly in terms of producing a niche product for an external market. If they are to do so, they need a competitive exchange rate. So that is another objective that a central bank has to keep in mind. Now, in order to promote entrepreneurial skills among the wider population, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka is also advocating including financial literacy and entrepreneurial skills development aspects into the school curriculum, which would be implemented within the wider framework of the National Financial Inclusion Strategy of Sri Lanka. We are also looking at regulations related to microfinance to formulate the best possible policy on tackling the problem of over-indebtedness 
and the lack of customer protection. Finally, in the current environment of a depreciating currency, it is advisable that the MSME sector is oriented towards the export sector, helping to increase the foreign currency inflow to the country. APRACA is playing a leading role in promoting rural financing through a number of activities, such as knowledge sharing, capacity building, and research. APRACA's efforts to identify the shortcomings in MSME financing and creating a dialogue on appropriate remedies should be highly commended. I wish APRACA all the best in carrying out this important role in improving the quality and efficiency of rural financing. It is also my duty to pay a generous tribute to the Bank of Ceylon, its chairman, Mr. Ronald Pereira, its general manager, Mr. Senrat Bandara, and their team for organizing this forum in an exceptional manner. As I said at the outset, uh, from listening to the summary, you have clearly had some very productive deliberations during the course of the day. And I hope it will help all of us find more effective solutions to the problems faced by the MSME financing sector in our respective countries. Let me finally invite all our foreign guests to enjoy a typical Sri Lankan hospitality. And I hope you will also have the time to see the country a little bit. Colombo, in my view, is actually the least attractive part of the country. The beauty of the country is outside the capital. So I would encourage all of you, if you have the time, to take a few days to look around our beautiful country. And I hope all of you have a safe journey back home. Thank you very much.